Greco-Roman, American English, Greco-Roman, British English, classic wrestling, Euro-English is a style of wrestling that is practiced worldwide. Greco-Roman wrestling was included in the first modern Olympic Games in 1896 and has been in every edition of the Summer Olympics held since 1904. This style of wrestling forbids holds below the waist, which is the main feature that differentiates it from freestyle wrestling, the other form of wrestling contested at the Olympics. This restriction results in an emphasis on throws because a wrestler cannot use trips to bring an opponent to the ground or hook grab the opponent's leg to avoid being thrown. Greco-Roman wrestling is one of several forms of amateur competitive wrestling practiced internationally. The other wrestling disciplines sanctioned by United World Wrestling are men's freestyle wrestling, women's freestyle wrestling, grappling, submission wrestling, pancration, alish, belt wrestling, palavani wrestling, and beach wrestling. The name Greco-Roman applied to this style of wrestling as a way of purporting it to be similar to the wrestling formerly found in the ancient civilizations surrounding the Mediterranean Sea, especially at the ancient Greek Olympics. At that time, the athletes initially wore skin-tight shorts but later wrestled each other naked. It is speculated that many styles of European folk wrestling may have spurred the origins of Greco-Roman wrestling. According to United World Wrestling, a Napoleonic soldier named Jean Expreyat first developed the style. Expreyat performed in fairs and called his style of wrestling flat hand wrestling to distinguish it from other forms of hand-to-hand -hand combat that allowed striking. In 1848, Expreyat established the rule that no holds below the waist were to be allowed, neither were painful holds or torsions that would hurt the opponent. Flat hand wrestling, or French wrestling, as the style became known, developed all throughout Europe and became a popular sport. The Italian wrestler Basilio Bartoletti first coined the term Greco-Roman for the sport to underline the interest in ancient values. Many others in the 18th and 20th centuries sought to add value to their contemporary athletic practices by finding some connections with ancient counterparts. The 18th century work, Gymnastics for Youth by Johann Friedrich Gutz Muths, described a form of schoolboy wrestling called orthopale used by Plato to describe the standing part of wrestling that did not mention any lower body holds. Real ancient wrestling was quite different, see Greek wrestling. The British never really enjoyed Greco-Roman wrestling in comparison to its less restrictive counterpart, freestyle wrestling, and neither did the Americans, despite the efforts of William Muldoon, a successful New York barroom freestyle wrestler who served in the Franco-Prussian War and learned the style in France to promote it in the United States after the Civil War, citation needed. However, on the continent of Europe, the style was highly promoted. Almost all the continental European capital cities hosted international Greco-Roman tournaments in the 19th century, with much prize money given to the place winners. For example, the Tsar of Russia paid 500 francs for wrestlers to train and compete in his tournament, with 5,000 francs awarded as a prize to the tournament winner. Greco-Roman wrestling soon became prestigious in continental Europe. It was the first style registered at the modern Olympic Games, beginning in Athens in 1896 with one heavyweight bout, and grew in popularity during the 20th century. It has always been featured in the Olympic Games, except during the Paris Olympic Games in 1900 and the St. Louis Olympic Games of 1904, when freestyle first emerged as an Olympic sport. Perhaps the most well-known of Greco-Roman wrestlers in the 19th century was Georg Hackenschmidt, born in Dorpat, Russian Empire, and nicknamed the Russian Lion. Hackenschmidt, in 1898, at the age of 21 and with 15 months of training, defeated the experienced Paul Pons in a match in St. Petersburg, Russia. In 1900, he won professional tournaments in Moscow and St. Petersburg, and a series of international tournaments after that. After defeating Tom Jenkins from the United States in both freestyle and Greco-Roman matches in England, Georg Hackenschmidt wrestled exclusively freestyle in order to compete better against English, Australian and American opponents. Winning more than 2,000 victories in Greco-Roman and freestyle, Hackenschmidt served as the physical education advisor to the House of Lords after his retirement. Professional matches in Greco-Roman wrestling were known for their great brutality. Body slams, chokeholds and headbutting was allowed, and even caustic substances were used to weaken the opponent. 
By the end of the 19th century, gouging with the nails, punching and violently slamming the arms together around the opponent's stomach were forbidden. Greco-Roman matches were also famous for their length. Professionally, it was not uncommon for there to be matches lasting two or three hours. William Muldoon's bout with Clarence Whistler at the Terrace Garden Theatre in New York lasted eight hours before ending in a draw. Even in the 1912 Olympics, a match between Martin Klein of Russia, Estonia, and Alfred Asikainen of Finland lasted for 11 hours and 40 minutes before Martin Klein won. He received the silver medal because he was too tired to compete in final match next day. That record was later published at Guinness World Records. The International Amateur Wrestling Federation, IAWF, took over the regulation of Greco-Roman wrestling in 1921. Since then, matches have been dramatically cut short, and today all movements that put the life or limb of the wrestler in jeopardy are forbidden. Professional wrestler Lou Thez, who initially trained extensively in Greco-Roman, popularized the Greco-Roman backdrop during early televised professional matches. In Olympic competition, countries of the former Soviet Union, Bulgaria, Turkey, South Korea, Romania, Japan, Sweden and Finland have had great success. Karl Westergren of Sweden won three Greco-Roman gold medals in 1920, 1924 and 1932 and was the first Greco-Roman wrestler to do so. Alexander Karolin did the same in 1988, 1992 and 1996. Ivar Johansson of Sweden won gold medals in Greco-Roman in 1932 and 1936 and also a gold medal in freestyle in 1932. The United States Olympic delegation, exclusively wrestling freestyle before, first entered Greco-Roman wrestling in 1952 and has taken three gold medals, won by Steve Fraser and Jeffrey Blatnick in the 1984 Los Angeles Olympic Games and by Rulon Gardner at the 2000 Olympic Games in Sydney, Australia. Please like, subscribe and comment on the next video you want to see.